everyone, it's Dawn with TwiceYearCheap.com and I just wanted to chat with you a little bit today. Um, I get asked a lot how it is that I started Twice Sheared Sheep and what made me decide to start recycling yarn and making row counters and stitch markers and all of that amazing stuff. So I thought we'd have a little story time today and I'll tell you how it all got started. So years and years ago, um, probably close to 15 years ago, I was a young stay-at-home mom with two small children. I had a toddler and a baby, and I had just started taking up knitting again because I, I actually had quit playing online um, MMOs. I was playing Final Fantasy VII, I think. No, Final Fantasy XI at the time. And um, I realized that that was probably not very healthy for me. <laughs> and so I quit playing online video games and I took up knitting. And um, I started knitting and just like I approach everything, I, I kind of obsessed about it. And so I learned to knit socks and I learned to knit mittens and I knit like, 10 pairs of baby socks that year, that, that Christmas, and mittens, and scarves, and I wanted to knit all of the things. And I joined the Yahoo Knitters group. This was before Facebook. It was before Ravelry. Um, so I joined the Yahoo group and found some knitting groups of some knitting moms that I could chat with. And in this, I discovered that most people like to knit with wool which was baffling to me because everything that I had ever known about wool was those horrible itchy sweaters that your mom stuffed you into when you were a kid and you gave you a rash and it was just awful. And so I'm like, why on earth would you want to knit with wool yarn? It, it was just crazy to me. And that was right about the time that socks that rock were first coming out, that hand dyed yarns were first coming out. And um, I don't remember how it happened that I was chatting with somebody somewhere and I mentioned that I, I don't understand why you would knit with wool yarn. All I had ever knit with was acrylic from Michaels or Hobby Lobby or something like that. Uh, although I did go, you know, once upon a time to, there's an incredible knitting shop in Boulder, Colorado, which was about 40 minutes away from where I lived called um, Spindles, Shuttles, and Skeins. And it's a huge knitting shop and they have looms and spinning wheels and fiber and yarn everywhere. And it's, you know, it's like a Mecca. It's gorgeous. It's wonderful. But I had never knit with wool yarn. And so these people from Socks That Rock, I don't know what possessed them, but it was amazing because I, I said, you know, oh, I don't know whether I can knit with wool yarn. I don't know about that. And they sent me a skein of wool yarn, of sock yarn, one of the first, you know, skeins as they were first getting started. And it was amazing. It was luscious. It was gorgeous. It was so soft. The colors were so amazing. It was like an epiphany to me that this is what yarn could be. This is what knitting could be. And I never wanted to knit with crappy acrylic yarn again. And so I set out to, you know, how do I get more hands on more of this? But you know, I was a young stay at home mom and I didn't have any money for knitting really. I mean, knitting was something that I was doing to keep myself busy because I need to be busy all the time. And you know, I'd gone from, you know, a high powered high school student taking all of the advanced classes to a high powered college student taking all of the classes to, um, you know, working and going to college at the same time, working to going to college and having a baby at the same time to all of a sudden, I was a stay at home mom. I wasn't working. I wasn't going to school. I had, you know, t a toddler and a baby wasn't enough to, <laughs> to fulfill me, to keep me busy. <laughs> So I took up knitting and um, but because I didn't have any money, I didn't have any way to get a hold of a lot of this amazing yarn. So I ran across a blog about how to unravel um, sweaters for yarn, how to recycle yarn. Again, this was before YouTube. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I feel so old now. <laughs> but 
But um, so I read this blog post and I'm like, hey, I can do that. I can go to the thrift store and I can get cotton yarn. I can get silk yarn. I can get wool yarn. I can knit with these amazing natural fibers that I wanted to knit with. And so I picked out three sweaters, I think. I think one was cotton, one was wool, and one was this amazing rayon silk blend, which sounds, you know, now I'm like, oh, I don't know why I picked that sweater, but it looked like I think that silk should look. It was shiny and shimmery and it was creamy white and it was so gorgeous. And it was a heavier weight. It was like a worsted weight, I think, or a sport weight. And so it was something that I, I felt comfortable knitting with because at the time I, I didn't knit with lace back then. Now I, I, lit, I knit mostly with lace, but <laughs> then I didn't knit with any lace. And so it was something that I felt comfortable with and that's the one that I decided to do first. And I didn't have any of the tools that I have now to knit, to unravel this sweater. So I had a seam ripper and a pair of scissors and I sat down to do this and I picked apart my seams and I pulled apart my yarn and I didn't have a ball winder and I didn't have a skein winder or a swift or anything. So I took one of those wooden baby gates because I had a baby gate because I had two little babies. So I had a baby gate and I set the, you know how you can make them wider or narrower? <laughs> I set the distance at 36 inches, which is a yard. And I kind of wrapped the yarn around the top of that until, you know, I ran out of sweater. And then I shortened the thing so that I could get the skein off and tied it in like two places. And kind of injured my shoulder while I was doing it because this is not a good motion for your arm, by the way. <laughs> And I put that, I, I took that, that skein of yarn and I put it in my bathroom sink with some shampoo like I had learned about and I washed it and I kind of squeezed out some of the water but not all of it and I hung it on a hanger on my towel rack and said, okay, it's going to dry and it's going to be yarn. <laughs> There's so many things I didn't know. <laughs> that I didn't spin it all, I didn't spin the water out so it just kind of hung there and dripped. There was like a puddle under my yarn. It just dripped for days. It wouldn't dry. And it was just awful. And, you know, my shoulder hurt. And the yarn didn't come out how I wanted it to because this rayon silk blend, like a lot of um, sweaters in a thicker gauge, was actually knit together with several plies of yarn just kind of held together like this instead of twisted together like you get with, um, normal knitting yarn. It was just kind of held together. And so then it was, it, it didn't look like I thought yarn should look like, and it was dripping and it was just, it was a terrible <laughs> experience and I hated every minute of it. And I said, I am never going to recycle another sweater again. Never. It's just awful. But a couple days later, I still had those two other sweaters sitting over there and they were kind of looking at me and I pulled one out and I said, okay, I know a little bit better now. I can do this. And so I unraveled those other two sweaters and I, you know, I learned to love to unravel sweaters, to pick them apart. There's something very zen about pulling a seam and just going zip and the, and the two pieces come apart. It's, it's like, it's magic and it's wonderful. And so I unraveled those two sweaters and I, I got better at it and I knew what I was doing. And then pretty soon I had unraveled enough sweaters that I had more yarn than I personally could knit. And I'm like, well, what am I gonna do with all this yarn now? And I ran across on eBay, there were a couple different people who were selling lots of recycled yarn. And I thought, people buy recycled yarn? They buy this? Well, let's give this a try because maybe we could set up you know, something where I've got amazing yarn and I know there are other people who need amazing yarn and we can, you know, get together and you can have amazing yarn. <laughs> and so I listed my first lot of yarn, a whole sweater's worth of yarn. Um, I think it was a navy blue cotton on eBay like 15 years ago. And I remember thinking, you know, if I list this, maybe it'll sell. You know, I, I'll have a little bit of money that I can, you know, buy something for my kiddos or, you know, we could go see a movie or something. It'll be great. And so I listed the yarn 
and it sold. And I was I remember being shocked and amazed that wait a minute, I I can be a stay-at-home mom in this world of, you know, still somewhat the fledgling internet and I can have a business here. And so I started unraveling yarn kind of semi-professionally and that was my business that I would unravel yarn and then I I learned to make stitch markers because I wanted stitch markers that were beautiful and were functional and didn't catch on everything and weren't dangly and you know didn't have the jump rings that snagged your yarn and were just awful and so I learned to make beautiful stitch markers and I'm like I can I I can give those to people too. I can share those with the world. And so my little business that started out because I wanted good yarn grew and grew and grew. And I eventually switched from eBay to Etsy and then from Etsy to my own website, twicesheercheap.com. I learned how to build a website so that I could do that. And this whole thing is, you know, has become my life. And it has been such an amazing, amazing thing. You know, 15 years of my life has been twice your cheap and yarn and the internet and me and you and it has been wonderful. And I realized, you know, the last couple of weeks I've been thinking about it and I realized that how incredibly blessed I have been to have this business and to have twice your cheap and to have you my wonderful fans and friends out there in internet land. And, you know, that I thought, just like I felt like I had this yarn that was so wonderful and that I wanted to have good yarn and I wanted to share that with everybody else. Now that I have this amazing business that has supported myself in my, you know, as my children have been growing up, you know, that I went from two children to five children. I stayed home through that whole time with them, that I had the flexibility to be able to take care of toddlers and babies. I had a set of twins, people. I had a set of twins. You know, my youngest children are 11 now and they're twins. And I continued to recycle yarn and I continued to have an income for my family and I never had to worry about whether or not I needed to go get a job somewhere else and who was going to watch my kids um, in 2014. So almost five years ago now, um, my grandmother who lived next door had a stroke. And we in our family immediately, you know, took up her horse boarding business and took care of her horses. And I took I took care of her and it, she just became part of my life. And I became her full time caregiver and I take her grocery shopping, and I um, I do her hair every Friday. You know, the, the roller sets where you put the hair in the Velcro rollers and under the hair dryer, and then you tease it all out into this big helmet. Yep, we do her hair every Friday morning, and I can take her to her doctor's appointments. I can take my children to their doctor's appointments. I can go on field trips with them. You know, several weeks ago, um, my grandpa passed away and we were able to pick up and go back to Colorado for his funeral without having to worry about whether or not I had time off from work, about whether or not, you know, I was going to be able to have an income. None of that was a concern. Oh, and I moved 600 miles away to an entirely different state without any kind of interruption, really. You know, the having a home-based business and a fiber business is amazing. And the best part of having a fiber business, aside from getting to play with fluffy, wonderful, squishy fiber every day, is the fiber people on the internet. Oh my gosh, you guys are the best people, the most amazing, wonderful people ever. And I'm so glad that I've gotten to know you. But I realized that I have been so blessed to have this business and that, you know, I wanted to share that with you as well. So for the next little while here on our YouTube channel, I'm going to do a group of series of where I'm going to talk about how to start your own fiber based business. 
I'll still post videos about knitting tutorials and fiber stuff and all of that wonderful stuff because, you know, we love that. But I'll also post things about um, photography and how to write patterns, how to make your own knitting course, how to set up a website, how to, you know, put together a booth so that you too can have a fiber-based business, whether you want to sell your knitted or crocheted items, you know, your ready-to-wear items, whether you want to sell patterns or knitting classes or hand-dyed yarns or fiber or hand-spun yarns, all of that stuff, you can do that here on the internet too. So to get you started, I want you to go to our website, twicesheardsheep.com slash handmade training that my personal business coach, um, Renee Christine, the person who has taken my little fledgling business that I've had for so long and made it explode like nobody's business, has offered her um, free three-part video training series, her handmade product line training series, for free to our followers at twicesheardsheep.com slash handmade training. And when you sign up for that, you'll also, um, be kind of put on the list to get some of her other awesome freebies that she gives away. She has a lot of business related tools that she's given away previously that have kind of been put into the vault, but she's promised to offer some of those to us again. So um, sign up for that, for that training and for that email list and you'll get those. And I will see you again tomorrow. I'm gonna try and post a video every day. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, and we're going to start right in with product photography. So I will see you tomorrow. Bye.